Tragedy. That seems to be the most prevalent theme among DFO's lore so far. Will we discuss the good we've done for mankind, rather than ponder upon our ridiculous decision-making skills? Short answer is, no. Sorry to get your hopes up, but we have only really just begun our journey into the dark. Let's go back to the very beginning. We've talked about Bacall, Michael, and even a little about Ozma. But we have yet to answer the real question. What exactly started this all? When did we go from mere wannabe heroes to being played as a puppet for Hilder? What was Hilder's first move? Well, to answer these questions, we should first discuss the time the first apostle transferred to Arad. Soroka, the intangible, the immortal, the fifth apostle. No one really understands fully how this apostle came to Arad. We have our suspicions, <coughs> Hilder, <coughs> but no definite proof. Historically speaking, there is no evidence linking to the perpetrator. But one thing is for sure, the transfer did not bode well for Arad's future. Just to give you an idea of the scope we're talking about here, this single event is historically one of the most important events that occurred on the lands of Arad. This one event has led to almost every single major event that occurs in the future. We adventurers weren't even involved, and yet this event impacts us greatly to this day. And you soon will learn about why. Sirocco has the power to change worlds. This can be good or bad, depending on your perspective. But unfortunately for her, and for us, her transfer to Arad was not something I'd call hospitable. The exact opposite, I'm afraid. The transfer on its own caused tremendous pain and suffering. She actually went insane from the pain, and all we can hear is her screams. Some even say she lost her immortality due to this transfer, and that is what led to her great suffering. However, we may never truly know. The place she landed at was known as the Screaming Cavern. The name itself did not originate from Sirocco's own screams, but rather the scream-like noises that original inhabitants created when moving within the earth. The inhabitants were monstrous giant worms with sharp teeth. They were sort of wiped out from existence when Sirocco teleported it to their cave. Now why is any of this important? Well, think about it. We have someone suddenly appear in a rad, suddenly go insane, and she also has the power to change the entire world. The mere combination of those three ingredients spell out the word doom, no matter how you look at it. And indeed, pure chaos erupted. Because of Sirocco, an event known as the de-evolution occurred on the lands of Arad. This single event created or mutated many of the creatures we adventurers ended up fighting in the future. You could say this event changed the entire landscape of Arad. In fact, you can even call this single starting point that propagated every single future event we adventurers end up dealing with. Well, enough about Soroko. Let's talk about the events surrounding her arrival. The screams and the distortion of space in Screaming Cavern attracted the attention of the Empire. Concerned about this event, the Empire sent its best soldiers, including the legendary Weapon Masters, to investigate. You might already know about Saran, Buanga, and Agonzo already. They are known as the greatest legendary Weapon Masters of their time, and are involved in quite a few of our future quests. But someone that you may not know is Roxy, a dark elf berserker and a Gonzo's lover. Roxy is an interesting character. She is a rare female berserker and created a contract with Kazan. The events that led up to this contract, including all the caveats, will be fully explored in a future lore video. For now, just know that this contract with Kazan involved a blood curse. Kazan's story will also be fully explored at a later point. But just know that Kazan was once a good friend of Ozma's, and he betrayed Ozma and started to wander the earth. And that is when he met Roxy and gave her a fraction of his powers. Some theorize that using the curse also allowed Roxy to become a berserker. But let's get back to the story. Most of the party were forced to quit after the battles within Screaming Cavern. Some, including Siran, Agonzo, Roxy, and Buanga, made it to Sirocco. Unfortunately, our brave group of heroes were not prepared to deal with an apostle. This was the first apostle sent over to Arad after all, and her power was not the likes of which anyone has ever witnessed before. Although Sirocco lost her immortality, she was still an apostle. Normal mortals could never come close. 
death was already guaranteed for all of them. But before Sirocco killed all these mortals, Roxy finally decided to use her trump card, unsealing the blood curse and releasing its full power. This pushed Roxy to the point of no return, but at least she gained tremendous amount of power doing so. The fight ended with Sirocco finally perishing under Roxy's blade. Now you might be wondering what I meant by point of no return. Well, releasing the full power of the blood curse has its cost. The cost was her life. It makes sense after all. A mortal killing an apostle should be impossible without a tremendous amount of power. Let's not forget about our good friend Agonzo. Understandably, he was devastated by Roxy's death. He loved her, and her death sent him into a spiral of depression. So Dungeon Fighters, the first apostle to ever grace the lands of Arad was killed before we even came into play. That at least is a nice change of pace. But the sacrifices made to kill the apostle were incredible, and we are still dealing with the aftermath of Sirocco's presence. Destruction yields creation. Therefore, we shall descend into the consumptive fires only to arise glorified, a new creation from the ashes of destruction. A series of disastrous events befell this world, leaving it in chaos. Events so cataclysmic that one can hardly imagine them to be pieces in a grander wheel of fortune. But even in those thrones of agony and despair, the pieces began to fit into place. And though they might once have lamented these events, dismissing them as mere accidental tragedy, those consumed by destiny are seeing the pieces converge to reveal a picture of their fate.